I highlighted, I think, for you one time, I said, read the important parts of this, and I'll highlight them for you, and I highlighted the whole thing. Here's really the important parts. Here you have a formula that has something that depends on more than one thing. It depends on two quantities. When we started this, we started with the formula of we worked with a circle, and it, we had the area that depended on a single quantity. Here we have something that depends on two quantities. We could we could mindlessly go through and come up with a formula, which would be, we'll do that first, but then we want to understand the formula. So to deal with this, there's two quantities here, and they're multiplied together. So we might have to use the... <laughs> Very good. Good assessment of that we have to use the product rule. This is a product, so you have to use the product rule. It's good that they call the product rule the product rule because you use it when you have a product, right? What would this give you? If, if, <laughs> if you differentiated both sides here, what would you get? This side's easy, dA dt. But this is a product, so when you di differentiate a product, what do you, what do you get here? DL dt times W plus L times DW dt. Okay, that L is... Okay. You have two parts to this. This rate of change of area depends on four things now. Would you like me to count the things for you? One, two, three, four... I was about, you want them all different colors? No, it's too hard. It depends on four different things. Again, I said you can just mindlessly come up with the formulas and then plug the numbers in and, you know, get an answer to the question. But I do want you to understand why it depends on four things. And this is an example we can use as long as we do something like this, not that. <laughs> no, uh, this is what I was thinking. I would just have a nice blank fresh sheet, not that. Okay, let's uh, let's get a rectangle because we're talking about a rectangle, right? We're on word now. Yes. Okay, this is a rectangle. What am I doing to the rectangle right now? I'm changing everything about it. I'm changing the width, the length. I am sometimes making it a square, but a square is just a special rectangle. It's A square is a subcategory of rectangle. I could change color, but that will not affect our problem. Are you, are you suggesting that we fill the rectangle with something? What color would you like to fill it with at the risk of starting to talk about colors? Bright green. Okay, must be bright green. Except, no, you know what? This is not good because, never mind. Yeah, we, it does not constantly change, so we have to go back to... One less. No, we. No, 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 no. Just we can't. I. Be, I. What's that? Was it working before? Did we go back to the very beginning here and start over? Ah, uh -huh, okay. Oh, so if I went to fill first, let's pause. Start. Not restart. Start. Rectangle. That was quality. That was quality. Nothing. So, I'm. I, there's four things that are uh, that are involved here, right? There's whatever the actual length and width happen to be at the moment, right? The area, the the rate of change of area is going to be affected by a bunch of things. It's affected. It seems like it's only affected by how fast I change the width and how fast I change the length. And now I realize I did it again, right? I got to start again here, never let go. It's affected by how fast I change the width and how fast I change the length. But it's also affected by whatever the width happens to be at the moment and whatever the length happens to be at the moment. So let's let's pretend that I change only one thing at a time here. Let's say I keep this fixed. So I'm actually going to let go so you can see where the old rectangle is. Let's say I, I, I don't change the width of the thing and I only change the length. Okay. So I, if, I, if I move this slowly, I'm gaining area pretty slowly, right? D, A, D, T is pretty low number. If I change this quickly, I'm gaining area more quickly, right? That's pretty intuitive. We understand that. But it's also affected by how wide it happens to be at the moment, right? If I make this really narrow, now, now, if I, 
if I add to it slowly or quickly, I'm barely gaining any. But if I use that same rate, but it's this wide, right? Let's say I'm going down here at one centimeter per second. I'm gaining more area that way than if it's this way and going down at one centimeter per second, right? If I go down at one centimeter per second, I'm not gaining very much area. It's affected by two things. The amount of the the amount of area I'm gaining here, or sorry, the rate that I gain area this way is affected by how fast I move this times how wide it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? When it's wider, I'm gaining more area when I start changing it down like that. The, the area gain here, the rate that I gain area based on the bottom is how fast I move it times how wide it is. So if you go back to this, that is this component right here. How wide it is times how fast I move it. The, the area that I gain by moving the rectangle down is this. And the rate that I gain area off the side is this. This component is moving it off the side, right? So if I go back to my picture, now you can predict this. But if I move this way, when this is really tall, we called it the length, but when it's really tall, I gain area pretty quickly, right? That's that's a lot of area gained. If I go if I go one centimeter every second here at a constant rate, I'm gaining area a lot more quickly that way than if I go if the length happens to be not that much, right? If I put both of those together, I'm gaining area based on both those components, even though it's hard to decipher what's happening. I'm gaining area this way and that way based on those four things. It's based on whatever the length and width happen to be at the moment, plus how fast I'm going that way and how fast I'm going that way. It's the length times dW dt. That's, that's for the area gain on this side. And this is the width times dL dt for the area that I gain this way. It's based on those four things. That's why that formula is what it is, right? Now, again, you can just generate the formula and mindlessly use it, but you should think about what's happening, right? It was like our one last time for the, the circle. We had we got this formula for the area of a circle. We we ended up with this formula that said d a d t was uh, pi. Oh yeah, it was two pi r d r d t, right? It was two things. It was the rate of change of radius, how fast you're going out times the circumference because you're gaining the area around the circumference. It makes sense the bigger the circumference is, right? And you could actually stretch out the circumference long here and then say, if I increase this, it's like I'm kind of almost like I'm having a rectangle that I'm wrapping around the outside. Okay, when you generate these formulas, think about what they mean. There's all kinds of, there's probably more than you need here to work with. There's lots of formulas you've done before. And it even hopefully to just drive the point home here, um, sometimes it'll say, what is this if H is a constant? What is it if H isn't a constant? It doesn't say if H isn't a constant here. It says if all of them are variables, right? The formula should look different, right? If H is a constant, you treat it like pi. You just, you just leave it out, right? You treat it like one-third pi H. You put all of that stuff outside. If you're writing the formula for this, dv dt is just put one-third pi h outside and then times it by, you got to go 2r times dr dt, right? But all that stuff is, if it's a constant, then it's you don't even have to worry about using a product rule or anything. Just leave it all outside. Okay, there's lots of questions here and they range. There's, there's ones involving the Pythagorean theorem, right triangles. And the reason you do that, then there's one like this. This, uh, all of these are there's applications here that uh, relate to that. All these ones that involve traveling north and east and all that stuff, use Pythagoras, Pythagorean theorem, PT. There's a very real life question: a bug walking away from a wall <laughs> at a rate of three meters per minute. I guess that's probably reasonable, but it's a 40 meter high wall. It's a very high wall. <laughs> there is a right triangle one. There is the ladder question. This is uh, where I think told a 10 minute long story on 
one of the previous videos from previous year about me and falling off a ladder. So, no, you can watch it sometime if you want. There is lots of right triangle stuff here. I'll probably at some point tell you about that. There is hot air balloon rising, rising relates to previous things. This uh, shadow walking, this one's a little bit more difficult. Try working on these, okay? I would say you probably have all the knowledge you need to know, all the facts you need to know to be able to work on all these. It just means you need to take the time. Usually I devote three classes to this, but it's better if, like, so next time, I'm not going to tell you anything. You're just going to work on these. We'll do the same like last time where you can, once you go through and do all these, I'll put a mark on my markbook for having done all these, right? There's also the assignments, but if you go through, you have the answers here, you can check, make sure you understand. For learning, that's that's probably good. Don't think there's anything more magical about the assignment versus this. I'll put a mark in out of whatever, 17 here or something, once you go through and do it. You have the answers. Um, you should be able to. I'll print out some solutions for it at some point that you can check. Okay?